click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of Machine Design 1. We are right now learning about the design of various springs. In the last session, we have seen the design aspects and standard procedures that we can follow to design a helical spring. In today's session, we are going to look at the first numerical which is quite a simple one where many of the factors are given in order to design a spring. So problem statement is there on the screen, let us look at it. So student, as it is mentioned, we have to design a helical spring or a helical compression spring. Now we know that there is a difference between helical compression and helical tensile springs. Of course, we will go through different numerical and understand what's the basic difference. So we have to design a helical compression spring for the given values where maximum load acting is given, maximum possible deflection or maximum feasible deflection is given, spring index is given, the ultimate stress for the given material is given and the constant of rigidity is also mentioned. So we have to move ahead. So let us start. Now since the maximum load that is acting and maximum deflection that is possible or the allowable is already given, we are already done with the first step. So let us directly switch to the second stage or second step where we have to look at the material properties and find out some material constants. So very first constant is the allowable shear stress. The value is generally based on different aspects. So the aspects let me write down. The tau allowable is generally given by this aspect or as per the Indian standards you can go for this particular aspect divided by factor of safety. In absence of factor of safety, the formula relies that only one is the factor of safety. So let us consider the Indian standard for the design and therefore the value allowable here will be the given value directly and it comes out to be 0.5 times sigma ultimate. We have been given the sigma ultimate value so when we multiply it with the given value which comes out to be 525 Newton per millimeter square. The next important factor that we need to determine is the Wall's factor and Wall's factor is given by this particular formula. Where this C is nothing but the spring index. We have been given spring index equal to 6. So let us substitute the value. After solving the spring index value somewhere comes out to be since it's a ratio of uh, just numbers there is no unit for that. So these are the two important factors that we have found out which we are going to use for the further design. The next step generally that we proceed with is the wire diameter because rest of the factors are already given. So that's why let us go for the wire diameter calculation. So in this case, this becomes my allowable value of shear stress. The value I already have found out is 525 Newton per millimeter square. The Wall's factor that we have found out is 1.3105 into the given expression 8 into the load that is given for us is 1250 the spring constant again is 6. Now generally we can use this particular formula also somehow the inclusion of D will make it difficult because there will be another member unknown member and this value is not specified that's why one of them D by small d is replaced by this particular constant C where D cube reduces to D square. So using this particular formula the only unknown that we have can be found out and that comes out somewhere equal to 
10.55 millimeter. So let us take wire diameter equal to 11 millimeter. Therefore, the mean diameter can be found out using the formula C into D, which is equal to 6 times diameter and therefore D comes out to be 66 millimeter in our case. So these are the important findings. Let me bracket them so that we will understand. As we move ahead, we will get number of coils. The number of coils we need to find out using this particular empirical relation where we already have been given the value of delta. We have been given the rest of the values so we can simply substitute the values. Let's modify this formula in order to find number of coils. Now this n is nothing but the number of active coils and therefore n converges to After substituting the values, the delta value specified is 30 millimeter into the value or the modulus of rigidity given. In terms of Newton per millimeter square, the wire diameter that we have figured out is 11. The applied load is 1250. And the mean diameter that we have got 66. So as we solve this particular expression we will get value of n somewhere equal to 4.48. Now it's a number so that's why there is no unit but since it's a number it can't be a random number and therefore let n is equal to 5. So this is what the number of active coils that are going to be used for the spring. Let's find out the total number of coils. Now we know that total number of coils include not only the number of active coils but also the end coils whether they will be half or they will be complete coils. If they are going to be half on either end that becomes only one coil. So for this application let us assume that it's a square end and therefore two number will have to be added to the actual or active coil so that becomes 5 plus 2 7 and therefore total number of coils for the given spring is equal to 7 with this particular number let us move ahead now here we are finding out different parameters associated with this spring which is a part of design of spring the next parameter is the solid length of the spring and that is basically given by this particular formula the substitute values 7 is the total number of coils and diameter D that we have found out is 11 and therefore the solid length that we obtain is 77 millimeter. The next thing is we have to consider certain gap because we need to find out the free length. Guys these are two important aspects as far as the spring is concerned. Free length will be given by this particular empirical relation. We have to assume certain axial gap between them. So considering a gap of 1 millimeter between consecutive coils, we have to find out the free length which will be given by the solid length which is 77 plus the maximum deflection possible they have given already is 30 millimeter plus the actual gap. Now axial gap will be given by number of coils which is 7 minus 1 into the axial gap which we have assumed to be 1 millimeter. So the value here comes out to be 113 millimeter. Now somehow there is a small mistake that we need to rectify. This particular value of delta is the maximum allowable value. Let us quickly find out the actual or the ideal value which is going to be possible in this particular case. So let us make the calculation. I will say allowable let's see what's the value of delta comes out to be the formula that we can use for delta is using this formula the substitute values
upon solving, I'll get the value somewhere equal to millimeter. And that's why this is the actual deflection that the spring is going to undergo. Now, since the allowable value is just 30 and this crosses little bit of it, though it is not safe ideally, but we can consider it because no factor of safety is revealed in this case. And therefore, the actual free length is given by again the same formula where we have to use LS plus delta which now in our case is 30.4 plus the axial gap which is going to be 6 in our case will be equal to somewhere equal to which is the last parameter which is considered in the design of his helical spring. So there we complete with the numerical. Let me quickly review what we have done is we have started with the given data since majority of the data is given the number of steps have already reduced down. So we have started with determining the material properties where we have found out the allowable value of shear stress. Then we have went for the walls factor. We found it out. Then based on the walls factor and the given deflection values, we have found out the wire diameter. Based on the wire diameter, we have found out the mean diameter of the spring. So based on these factors, we have moved ahead and we have found out the number of coils then which are the active number of coils based on which we have found out the total number of coils and based on all these factors, we have found out the solid length as well as the actual deflection that the spring may undergo and finally the free length of the spring. So there are first numerical A. In the next section, we are going to look at a broader way of this particular numerical where we are going to do the trial and error method for the given particular environment or the conditions of the numerical for helical springs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.